My name is Melanie Rose and I'm going to show you how to make a tempera today. This is Rona um, and this is her egg and this is the me one of the mediums we're going to be mixing the pigments with and all the pigments that we're going to be using can be found in either in the garden or in the kitchen. Um, so it should be good fun, shouldn't it? Yeah, we agree it's going to be good. Yeah, okay. Egg temper is an ancient painting medium um, and as you as I've already said all you need is an egg um, which acts as a binding medium some pigments I use um, professional artist pigments um, which come which are pure pigment and years ago would have been found in the earth or there would have been precious stones or there have been plants um, even animal bones would have been used um, but today mostly I would imagine that they're synthetic but they still give an incredible um, vibrancy some are pure today pure pigments but no animal bones are used um, and there's no cruelty um, but you can use powder paints um, if you've got any powder paints but if you haven't got any of these I'm going to show you how to make um, a medieval pigments from what we've got laying around um, so I have got um, chalk this is um, chalk that I smashed up um, with a hammer and I'll just show you how to do that in a minute this is smashed up um, charcoal from a barbecue this is actually a piece of charcoal from the barbecue before it was burnt um, these are the charcoals after the barbecue has been burnt um, and in fact I did a whole sketchbook so I've used turmeric which I've got in the kitchen this is the chalk um, I found some earth some mud outside I found some ash I've got used coffee um, cumin um, I've used a plant that I had in the kitchen which we call a butterfly plant. Um, you might have one at home that made this sort of lovely bluey colour. I used some basil, which I've got in the garden. Um, and I've used some beetroot, which, which came out with a beautiful pink colour. I would imagine you've got most of these things um, in the kitchen. It's such a versatile medium to work with and it's good fun. Um, these are some of the paintings I did with the, the pigments that I bought from a shop. Um, of the moon and flowers um, so you can see the colours are incredibly um, vibrant and you can have a lot of fun with making the, the, the medium okay let's get started okay so having shown you what pigments we can make from the kitchen and the garden I've got a chalk here um, and it could be a piece of charcoal from the barbecue but this is a, a, a drawing chalk that I've got and I'm going to make the raw pigment by just smashing the pigment up with a hammer so you need to make this as fine as possible like this and then you've got some lovely raw pigment to work with later on i've got some basil leaves and some mint both of them from the garden um, but you might have some in pots in the kitchen um, from the supermarket. I put them in a pest pestle and mortar and I'm going to just grind these up now. Um, and already it's making a lovely green sort of pigment that you could actually paint. If you added a bit of water with this, you could probably paint this straight into your sketchbook or into your painting. But I'll show you later on. By adding egg, you can extend the, um, the pigment and use it in your painting or drawing. Okay, let's get started. I should just say very quickly that it's a very stable way of making pigments. Um, it doesn't, doesn't smell, um, it doesn't rub off. The egg yolk creates this really strong binding medium that keeps the pigment stable. Right, so how do we make this? Well, first of all, you need to get your egg. And you can just use supermarket eggs. Ideally, you would use um, organic eggs or 
free range eggs or if you've got hens this is perfect and what you're going to do is you're going to start as if you're making a meringue because um, you need to separate the egg white or the albumin from the egg yolk so cracking the egg Ooh. making a bit of a mess here I'm just going to rock the egg yolk backwards and forwards having got the shell off and now I'm just trying to get as much of the albumin or white off the egg yolk so I'm rocking it backwards and forwards and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the egg yolk to get the yolk out of the sack so you squeeze it like this whoop, and then it should just flow out like this and then you put the egg sack in with the eggshell and the white unless you're going to make meringues and then you keep the egg, egg white separate you do need to have a flannel and some um, or something to wash your hands close by because it is a bit sticky so here we have the egg yolk and then you add the same amount of water again so you've got a little bit of egg yolk and then try and measure out exactly the same amount doesn't matter if it's slightly more the purists say that you should use distilled water but I've only ever used tap water which is fine and then getting um, a palette knife you just mix the eggy watery mixture together now artists will add something called gum arabic and gum, gum arabic is, is like a thickening agent um, and also it will keep the pigment open for longer which means that you can it doesn't dry so quickly but years ago they would have used honey so if you've got a little bit of honey use honey but you don't if you haven't got any honey don't worry Oop, just a little bit of honey mix that and then you're good to go you've now got your egg solution so the next thing you need to do is to get a palette just a white plate or a white bowl would be ideal and the first thing I'm going to first colour I'm going to mix up is the pink chalk that I smashed up on the step so there's a bit of the pink chalk and I'm going to mix a bit of the egg yolk and you will end up with this lovely paint pigment so that was made with the egg with the chalk um, that we smashed on the step. I've also got some basil that I pestle and mortared earlier. So I'm going to add a bit of my egg mixture to the basil. So now I've got pink and green. And now I'm going to add, mix up a couple more colours. I'm going to use some mud that's from the garden. I think I might mix my mud with a bit of charcoal from the barbecue. All of these things I've just broken up and made a lot finer. Whoop. So just mix. Okay, so I've got a nice sort of browny black. So I'm building up quite a good repertoire of colours. I could, I quite fancy making a bit of yellow now, which I'll make with some turmeric, which I've got in the kitchen. There we go. It's a good idea to keep your palette knife, keep everything separate and clean, because it's very easy to get things in a muddle and then you'll end up with just a brown mess. There we go. Right, so now I will have a go with painting with some of these 
lovely pigments. I'll just get my sketchbook and let's have a go with some of these pigments that we've been making. So this is the basil. So I'm just going to get a nice big paintbrush. So, and see how this comes out. Oh, lovely green from the basil. I'm going to have to pop this over here. Um, and now I'm going to ha have a go with the turmeric. This works really nicely. You can see that the yellow of the turmeric is just rather gorgeous. And here's my earth and charcoal combination. Ooh. And then and finally, I'll do my pink chalk combination. I might pop that that side. So, there we go. That's how to make pigments that are literally from the garden, from the kitchen. I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot more um, and be able to report back. I'm sure John Hansard would love to know what other pigments you found. Um, the artist pigments that I use, which are here, again, would have been, years ago, they would have been made from I mean in fact a lot of the pigments today still have the names like lamp black would have been used from the soot of lamps ivory black sadly would have been made with ivory um, of course that's illegal these days but it still carries the name so if you look at the names of some of these pigments they will hold the name of what it used to be made out of this is just cadmium yellow but it's a What's so brilliant is it's avoiding using plastics because in a lot of commercial paints, plastics are used. So here we're working in a way that doesn't use any plastics whatsoever. So here we have a mixture of the artist pigment and my chalk pigment. So the artist pigment I was able to buy in a shop, an art shop, um, or you can buy it online. And here we go. Here is the powder paint is similar but your powder paint for school or the one that you might have at home has got has been bulked out with something like chalk um, so it doesn't have the vibrancy as the artist pigments but you can still mix it with the egg my chalk and the artist pigment is rather lovely there we go i will be spending most of the afternoon painting i think Thank you for watching. I hope you have success with making your egg tempera. Um, this is goodbye from me and from Big Girl.